Hello everyone, welcome back to Rose of Green. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for being with me. Uh, today we're going to do an unboxing and this is going to be of the Mars Hydro FC8000. This is their brand new light that just came out. Uh, and I am excited to uh, get started with the par test, uh, just an overall review, and then we will do a spectrum test as well. Anyway, let's get started here. I know that Mars Hydro is really good for their packing, so uh, I'm not going to be surprised if this is a really good packing job. First we got some foam here, I'm just going to throw that off to the side. Uh, we got the user manual, let's see, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so it tells you your hang distance, what you should start it at and all that. And then it has your instructions on how to put together. Uh, this is, it's fairly straightforward when you put it together. Just make sure that you put your eye hooks in. Uh, then uh, the rest of your bars will fall into place. So uh, just double check that before you get started because people have ran into issues there. Uh, anyway, let's continue on here. And of course there's some more padding in here. And then you can see how uh, they're starting to like these put together lights uh, because it's easier for shipping it takes up less space and uh, it's also more protective uh, protects your light a lot better so I'm just gonna take that out see if I can move that out of the way and of course down below we've got uh, the exact same thing remove that as well and then we will get into the nitty-gritty uh, here we are here are all the cables and wires that you use to hook up to each bar so I will just I was gonna move that out of the way but I think it's attached to the driver See here. First, I'm going to remove these bars. These are the bars that we hook it up to. Make sure that you have them hooked up the right way. Okay. Anyway, let me just move this off the side. Of course, we got. Uh, rope ratchets in here and then we got the hangers and of course our daisy chain cord for our dimmer These are all of our wing nuts and uh, anchors uh, that we hang our rope ratchets from uh, It's got some washers in there and then like I said the wing nuts to tighten the bars in uh, Again, here's just some more uh, material this is for the driver to hold the driver in place of course here we are and this is a uh, so Zen driver I believe uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly but I did look into these drivers and uh, from what I understand, it's the same manufacturer as uh, Inventronics. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's just some stuff that I read online when I was doing some uh, doing some research. But uh, regardless, uh, it's a nice, looks like a well-built driver. Uh, we'll have to see how hot it runs, so we will do that when uh, we do the little review here. I'll let it run for like an hour, and then I'll uh, tell you guys how warm uh, it is to the touch. Of course, again, as I already stated, these are all of our wires, and uh, these just plug into the end of your bars. So what I'm going to do here now is I am going to set up this light. I'm going to get it all ready, and then I will uh, hang it. I'll find out the sweet spot for it, that uh, 1,000 PPFD, and then we will uh, continue with the PAR map, 
and then we'll do the spectrum test. So I just wanted to turn this on real quickly because uh, there has been uh, a little bit, uh, some people online were having a difficult time figuring this out. So for these eye holes, what you do is uh, there's a little, I'll bring this down here, you can see this little square thing right here in there, it moves around. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna line that up right there, okay? On that dot there, the round circle. So that's what I did here. So what you need to do is you take your washer, you put it on there like that. You bring it down to where that little puck is in there and you screw it in. Uh, the reason why you're putting that washer on is because once you get to this slit, you won't be able to continue to screw it. So you just wanna snug it up a little tiny bit, bring it over to where your marker is, right there and continue to tighten it. So there we go, it's all nice and tight. It's where the marker is. Uh, I'll actually loosen it off, I'll bring it over a little bit more to make it dead center. And there we are. So that's how you put those hooks in there. You got it on both sides. Now I'll continue to do the other ones and I will screw the bars in. Uh, just keep in mind that there is a bar, a light bar that goes on the outside so that you're not putting this right on the end. So here we are, I finally have it hung here. And uh, of course, I'm sure a couple of you guys have already said to yourself, hey, that's uh, the FCE 8000 or a FCE light. Uh, I can assure you it's not, this is an FC light, FC series light, and this is the new 800 watt, as I previously said. Just gonna give you a shot there. Uh, you can see the diodes are closer, like in the in the co corners again. They're just tighter, and then uh, they spread out and go along. So since we're speaking about diodes, uh, I thought I would let you guys know that this light here has 2,968 diodes. Uh, they are Samsung diodes. They're a mixture of uh, 3,000K and 5,000K. Uh, LEDs and then of course we do have the Osram reds in there as well as uh, you just seen when I did uh, the undershot. Uh, I just want to explain something. Uh, a couple people have been uh, coming to me and asking me if the FCE series diodes, uh, the bridge lux are better than uh, the Samsung's and uh, the answer is no they're not better. Uh, I guess there's another YouTube out, YouTuber out there spreading uh, misinformation saying that uh, Bridge Lux is a brand new diode and that uh, uh, they're better than the Samsung and stuff. Uh, that's that's false. Bridge Lock, Bridge Lock has been out for a very, very long time, uh, for a couple years, a few years, and uh, they're not better than the Samsung. That's why the FCE series is cheaper. But with that said, there is nothing wrong with Bridge Lux diodes. They're just uh, easier to get, uh, cheaper, diode to produce so it's easier for uh, light companies to get and make lights with them so uh, don't don't get confused I'm not saying the bridge lock di bridge lux diodes are no good because they are they're very good it's just that nothing beats Samsung diodes so anyway I thought I would clear that up because I was getting a lot of messages about it and people weren't quite sure why the FCE series was cheaper than the FC series if this other YouTuber was saying that the diodes and driver and everything was better. So um, anyway, enough of that. What I got in here is uh, I got it at 100% right now. And this unit has been going for a while, about an hour. And uh, I'm just gonna show you. So we're at 818 watts. Uh, that's good because the manual says uh, 18, 800 watts plus 5% plus or take 5%. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn it down to 75% and let's see how many watt we're pulling at 75% and it's uh, 550, 548. And let's go to 50% and see from there at 50% and we're at uh, 315. Uh, watt. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to crank this thing back up because we're going to take our readings at that as well. Um, there's a couple other things I wanted to say. It is a Black Friday event right now at Mars Hydro up to 18% off. And I want you guys to know that I have checked 
and my code rose of green stacks on it so you can get an extra off if you use my code rose of green so uh, that's a little trick and secret for you guys that it stacks and that's on all of the websites so I just thought I would tell you guys about that as well so uh, if you are here and you haven't seen my videos for a while it's because all videos are age restricted now so hit that subscribe button and also another thing you should do is if you don't want to miss any of my videos hit that bell button and hit all notifications uh, don't worry you won't get notifications all the time on your phone it's just when you enter YouTube you'll get notified that I put a video out so uh, hit that or else you're gonna miss all of my videos like you have been up till now um, This thing is uh, IP65 waterproof uh, The diodes and stuff and the driver is IP67 uh, The dimensions are 45.3 by 45.3 by 3 inches and uh, That's about it for this light so now that we're done with that we can get on with our power tests and uh, another thing I want to mention, we are doing this at 12 inches. Oh, just a second. We're doing this at 12 inches. Uh, it might be a little bit higher. Or wait a second. There we go. We got our bars. We're at 12 inches there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do our spectrum, or we're going to do our power rating test. So uh, this is the Apogee MQ610. And what it does is it uh, reads your uh, PPFD. So right here at dead center, 12 inches, we're 1430. If I go up over across the corner, down there, we're at 1300. You gotta remember I have the walls open to this tent. Down the side, we're at uh, 1243. And down over here, if I had this tour closed, it would be 1200, but it's a thousand. It's just because we're up front here, guys. Uh, we're even getting 1200 reading straight up front doors opened at everything right here 1300 door doors open So I'll bring it over here to the side we're at 1200 up the side Almost 1300 climbing to 1300 in the far corner. We're at 1300 as I bring it across to the center We're at 1300 up against the back wall, so I'll just show you that in there see so I'm gonna bring it back now that was at 100% let's check it now at 75% 75% on the dimmer we're dead center and we are at a thousand PPFD up in the far corner 852 down the side of course you can see we're at about 850 the whole way once we get to the front center it drops because the door is open over here to the center and we're at 875 drops in the corner up the side around 820 up to that corner 800 and of course back over to the center around 900 and 1000 once again so now let's go to 50 percent we will check out 50 percent Sorry guys, just want to make sure I'm accurate. So we're at 50% and we are at 640. Yeah, 640, so straight up. 560 over the left corner, 575. Down the side, 550. Three, four, up front, 500. Almost six, 560 the corner 507 530 far corner 515 and back to the center uh, 540 okay so here we are I need to turn this back up to 100 because what we are doing is uh, we are going to be doing a spectrum test and that's with uh, my spectrometer by upper tech that's spelt uh, U P R. TEK if you're interested uh, It's a spectrometer top the line spectrometer it reads your spectrum uh, your correlated color temperature um, Color rendering index and just all of that good stuff. It's uh, really helpful for comparing lights 
Uh, it goes from uh, 340 nanometers all the way up to 800, so it does read some of your UVA. Uh, it doesn't go quite low enough for UVB, but it does all your far reds, infrared, and all that. So uh, it's a very cool unit. Uh, if you're a company and interested in these, go check out the website. Very nice guys over there. But uh, what we're going to do here now, now that we have this back up to 100%, we're going to uh, put it onto spectrum mode. I'm just going to put it underneath here. And we will take a reading. I will take that back out. And that is our reading there. You can see we're doing awesome. Uh, very high in the reds. Uh, the blue's got a good spike. That's almost identical to what uh, they show you on the website. So, uh, again, very nice light. Let's go check out the correlated color temperature. It's oh, yeah, okay. So, there's the basic, and there we are. Uh, it was there in the first place. I'm a dummy. Uh, PPFE is 1424. PFD, that's 350 to 800 nanometers. It's 1460. And the overall color temperature of this light is 3488, so about 3500K. That is perfect. That's uh, what I like to see in my lights. Uh, I love the spectrum color around 3500K. But uh, anyway, my last, uh, the last things I could say about this is this light is absolutely overkill for a 4x4 tent. I mean, if you're running uh, 1500 parts per million of CO2, it would be all right, but uh, to be honest, it's uh, a little overkill. Uh, FC 4800 is awesome for this if you run it up like 10 inches above your canopy, or a FC 6500 is what I prefer because I could play with my height and uh, use that. But for a 4x4, this will work. Like if you want to run this thing, go ahead. Um, you could just raise it up quite a bit, and you'll have a good uh, spread on your canopy. But I really do recommend an FC6500 for a tent, but for commercial growing this is awesome because if you're stacking uh, stacking plants on top of plants uh, in a grow in a facility, it's awesome because if you're running CO2 you could run this nice and low at uh, 12 inches above your canopy and then your plants above it with again another light above there so uh, it would be really awesome for a grow facility even for like a five by five area open space um, really happy with this light it's nice on i honestly do prefer the folding lights that's just me though um, i'm sure commercial growers don't want to buy a uh, hundred of these lights and have to put them together either but uh, it is what it is it's better for shipping cheaper shipping better storage if you decide to take them down and everything else but uh, i'm just rambling now remember guys if you are new here or if you haven't seen a video for a long time remember hit that subscribe button and that bell for all notifications that's why you're not seeing my other videos uh anyway guys appreciate you stopping by hope you like this light review video uh, i'll have more to come in the future take care peace out